Hi everybody, Jo here again. It's Sunday and I'm just coming in for a little catch up with you. So what I'll do is I'll start off, I know a lot of you like to know the card sizes. Now this, um, the reason I made it was for a special friend and a special birthday. So I use ready-made card and envelopes just because that's me. And I found these lovely, I love DL um, slimline cards and I found these large slimline cards. Now the actual card blank here is an A4 size. So if you're making them yourself, just score down the middle. But, so it's sort of like um, a slimline card, but larger. So this actually, as I say, the card blank size is, is um, A4. And all I've done, so I've got my envelope ready, and all I've done is cut myself a piece of uh, multi-fairies card and then a piece of black card to go behind. And I've measured the size I'm using. Now this is actually 11 inches by three and a half. So it is a large area. And what's nice about this is we're going to blend on it. And I know a lot of you, when you start off, especially with blending, it's easy to blend on a smaller area. So let's have a go at blending on this larger area. I'm going to put those to one side. Now, as you know, I very easily run out of one side. I cannot believe how small my craft space seems to be. I'm sure you're the same. Although some of you, I have to say, have lovely craft rooms when you put photographs on absolutely beautiful now i'm going to use some oxides and purely because i've got oxides on my desk um not that i'm being lazy but um they're the ones ready at hand and i love when i'm blending choosing colors a that are my favorite colors but also that blend well that are very forgiving so we're going to go with mustard seed crackling campfire but in my head it's burning bonfire so i must try and remember uh, candied apple for my red and then I'm going to use vintage photo because I want to bring a brown in now if you're new to blending these colors blend easily so you, your yellow will automatically go into your orange and into your red and then into your brown so it's nice to have colors that are very forgiving and I tend to just put them in on my mat in the order I'm going to use them I find um, it's just easier for my head that way and I tend to put my tools. And as you can see, these are well used tools. Now, a lot of you've asked whether to use brushes, um, ink pads, um, blending tools, smoothies. Really, it's up to you. I've got to be honest, I love my brushes when I'm using um, my stencils. I find they give me such a lovely light touch. I tend when I'm blending, I want thicker colour, more colour, more intense colour. So I tend to use the round blending tools. But saying that, I love my smoothies. And if I've got a smoothie at hand, sometimes it just depends. I keep one pad per colour tone. So if, say, I'm using my brown ink and I haven't got a brown distress tool at hand, but I've got a, a smoothie with brown on, then I'll use my smoothie. So really, it's whatever I can get my hands on at the time. But I do keep, as I say, the ends for colour for colour groups. And also, I keep them for a long time. I mean, look at some of these. For me, if you get a new um, one of your foam pads, do put some ink on it and leave it and let the ink soak in. It just means that your pad's seasoned. Um, I almost find they need to be seasoned and well used. I think they're a bit like me. I always say... They like a fine wine, the older they get, the better they behave. So what we'll do is I tend to use a piece of kitchen roll just because I don't want finger marks on here. Now, I don't know how this might be a bit. Obviously, as I say, it's 11, um, 11 inches. So um, if it goes off camera at some point, I do apologise. Um, as I say, never enough room on my craft desk and we may not get all this in shots, but I'll do my best. So just bear with me. And I'm going to start with my yellow. Now, those of you that follow me will, um, you've heard me say this before, so I'll tell you what, you have your brew and, and your cheeky snack while I, I say this because you've heard this before. Mm. But when I'm putting the ink on my blending tool, I always do circular motions. I just find it helps the ink get evenly. If you sort of dab it like this, it's, it's not even. So nice circular motions. And then all we're going to do, again, circular motions, and I find I'm using a craft mat here just because for me, it glides well. The ink, and again, that's just personal choice. If you like to use glass mats or you prefer paper, whatever works for you, 
you do i always say this if you find something that works for you you do it it's like recipes if you've got that secret thing that works well for you by all means you stick with it so i'm just going to put the yellow right along again very quickly just circular motions and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to add my red now i know you think i'm a bit balmy but i like to just put the other end and i'm going to have red at the base so i'm coming in with my red now i may pick up a bit of yellow off my mat but that doesn't matter at all and i just want a bit more so i'm just going to ink up on that corner i like my corners a deeper color so i'm just doing circular motions and don't worry about these bits we'll be getting rid of those now the reason i've done it that way if I bring this in, when I come in with my orange, what happens now is I'm going to blend the orange in the middle, but I can almost blend it into the yellow and into the red at the same time. Now, I've purposely done it very harsh here to show you if when you do that, don't worry. That's harsh, I know, but we'll get rid of it. Don't worry at all. So again, we'll bring some orange in here. And I've purposely put a, a lot of, of orange here. Now again, I know that looks like a dog's dinner, but don't worry, because what we do is we now work on the blending. So what we'll do is if we work on this bit here, so if we just put the orange into the red, and I'm not putting any more ink, I'm just using my smoothies, um, my blending tool, sorry, without adding any more ink. And can you see how now the area here, you can't have a definite line? It's blended. Now, this is going to be harder to get rid of, but I'll show you what we do for this. So I'm just going to add a little bit more mustard seed and I'm going to go into my orange with the mustard seed. I'm almost working on the area where the two colours overlap. And then I'm going to come in with the orange. I haven't added any more ink. I'm using what's on my tool and then back in with the yellow. And do you know what? This is really good for your back wings. Mind you, you might not have any. I have. I really need to be ambidextrous. I need to, to even up my both arms. So when I blend that, can you see that starting to look? We're starting to get that nice blend. Now, if you get the odd bit of orange here, don't worry because that adds to the haze. But look at the difference. If I put that there, can you see the two? The side we've blended and you can see where we need to carry on. So I'll just carry on and do this so let's work on the red here into the orange and then let's go with the orange into the red and then we'll go with the orange it's all about for me i have to turn it the way just so it's the easiest for me to to work on so i'm going orange into yellow and then back yellow into orange. If I get out of breath, <laughs> this is my workout for today. <laughs> so I think I just want a little bit more with that orange into the red and um, into the yellow. It's quite funny, I have to concentrate on saying orange. I have this thing with Elliot, I mean, he's four now, and I call it orange and um it makes him giggle so i have to keep thinking no it's orange stop saying orange now what i tend to do and again this is just a little quirky thing i tend to when i've got my blending that i'm happy with it which i am there um, I tend to go with my lighter colour, so this is my mustard seed, and I'm actually going to go over the whole thing with my yellow. And I find it just, because this I want it to sort of look, I know it sounds a bit, you know, a bit sort of misty, a bit sort of that hazy, that lovely summer hazy sort of day. And just by adding the yellow, it sort of, it'll help blend it all, but also turn it round it just for me gives that and i'm happy with that as i say it's quite a large area i know i've got the other little bit of red there but i'm going to stamp over that so again you don't lose sleep over that 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my lids on because that's just the way I have to work, I'm afraid. And again, we all have different ways of working, but that's fine. I'm going to add a little bit of brown. So we're going to come in with the vintage photo. Now I'll just use a smoothie tip for this. Again, makes no difference. What I'm going to do, again, I use circular motions. I'm going to start at the bottom here because if my colour is very strong because I've just added the ink, it won't show up as much on the red, but it's going to show up more on the yellow. So a little tip, if you're using a colour for the first time, you're coming in with your ink on this corner and that'll give me almost a guide as to sort of how deep the colour is. Now I just want it sort of along the bottom and again I'm just doing circular motions. Pick a bit more up. I always try and re-ink on the corners because I do like my corners deeper. Right, and then let's just ink up the side. Right, now I don't want as much ink because it is going to show up on the on the yellow. Let's just blend that corner and go right along the top. I don't need to bring the ink in too far because I am putting this on black card. If I wasn't putting it on black card, I'd probably add a bit more brown and then possibly a black Sharpie line or some black ink. But I just want a little, just to frame it. I just think I need a little bit more on there. Do you do this at home? Do you say, oh, I finished that? Oh, no, I just need a bit more. Right, I'm, I'm happy with that. What we do need is, just before we wipe all this up, we're going to add our um, sun, moon. We're going to add a, a circular mask. So whether it's the sun or the moon, I think we'll go for the sun. And I think we'll put it there. I tend to like it off centre. You know me, I have a thing about things not being centre. So I'm thinking, let's go there. Now, when it comes to this, I don't want it to be too in your face. So let's think. Now, we could use brown. Now, that'll show up nice here. It might be too deep there. So maybe I could mix the colours. So let's go for, if we use our brown at the base... Because there's nothing to say we can't mix our colours, is there? Now, again, when you're using your circle masks, always remember to put the ink on the mask first and flick it off. So if I put the brown at the bottom where it's deeper, and then maybe let's go in for the orange and just flick the orange over the yellow. And if it doesn't show up enough, I can always add some brown. And then just to add to that haze, I'm just going to go over that brown with my orange. And then let's have a look. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And I love that way, the two. So like I say, don't be afraid to mix your colours. And then I'm going to have to just wipe my mask and then just give my area a bit of a wipe. I'm afraid I can't carry on if it's got all ink on it. And again, that's just me. Mr Inky Binky, still haven't washed him, look. He's desperate for a wash. I keep telling him I will. So, when we've got our background, now you could flick this with water, and I intend to flick it with water, but... For me, I'd rather do my stamping first because if I flick it with water, I'm going to have to wait for it to dry or heat dry it with my heat tool. So I'm thinking we could get on with our stamping and we can flick it later. So when it comes to the stamps, um, my friend loves poppies. So I decided I was going to use poppies, but I didn't want just poppies on this. I wanted sort of a meadow. So I'm going to start with the dandelion. Now, this is a set of three stamps. Absolutely fabulous. I've had these for years and they are so well used. Now, because I want these sort of in the, the background, I'm sorry, you know me, I'm going to have to turn mine this way. Can you still see? I'm going to use brown. So I'm going for the VersaFine Claire permanent ink, nice fine, it'll show up all this detail, but I'm going for acorn because I just want this sort of push it back, help with perspective, put it in the background. And I'm going to have one of these just here. 
part over the sun. I want three of these, but I want to make sure they won't look as natural as possible. So maybe one on this side. And again, I want to alter the height. And then maybe one in the middle. There we go. Of those. So already. And I think with the brown round the edge, that's the way my head works. It's really starting to just build up. And that looks lovely in the background. Now, I know a lot of you have asked um, how you clean your stamps. And I've got to be honest, I just use a damp cloth or I have some biodegradable uh, baby wipes. And I just, you don't have to clean your stamps. It's purely preference. Um, different crafters you'll find. Some crafters don't like to clean them. They like to leave them. Um, others, like me. The only reason I do, I've got to be honest, is what I find, if I don't, and then I decide to pick the stamp up, I get ink on my fingers. And for me, if I get ink on my fingers, I'm going to get ink on my work. I know some ladies like to put theirs in the sink. You know, it is really personal preference. Now, I'm using this, this gorgeous little, like I call it a firework dandelion, beautiful. And I'm going to just do some black stamping with this. So this one I want more in my... Oh, look how that pops. And again, I'm just going to do a few, I think, if we have. And just sort of alternate. And we're going to have this one with over stamping there. Now, just because I know we like odd numbers, but I don't want it to look too regimented. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that there. I think that balances it. Now, apparently, we like odd numbers because our brain, this is what I learned in my psychology, our brain likes to, if we have an odd number, it likes to add because it loves even numbers. And then that makes pheromones be produced and it makes us feel happy. So when we see odd numbers, it's more pleasing to the eye because it makes your brain happy. So you're stimulating happy hormones in your brain. So there we go. That's what we're doing today. <laughs> see, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Stimulating your happy hormones. Right, so we have wild poppies and this is a silhouette, but I've also got my group poppies. And what I'm thinking of doing is the larger one of the group poppy, I'm going to stamp that first because this is almost like my focal one. This is the one I'm going to add some colour to. So I'm thinking let's put this prize here, sort of in the, in the spotlight. That's my favourite one. I know we shouldn't have favourites. And then again, we'll go with this rule of let's have another couple of these. So we've got three. We could have a nice group over here, couldn't we? And again, I'm just altering. Actually, I think I'm just going to leave two of those, you know. I also like to change my mind as I'm going. Because if I just think we put three of everything, it's going to look too symmetrical, too re repetitive. And I don't want that. Um... Now, I love this little one. And this is one of my favourites to just stamp. Look at that. And I think we'll just have... And it, it, it goes beautifully because you've just got, like you have, the seed heads. Um, you've got seed heads, you've got the new flowers coming. Maybe just have one there. And then, right, let's give that a wipe. Now, I want to add my group poppies. And if I'm not sure with it being a full group, let's have a look. How it's going to look. I can get my acetate look and I can have a look. Now, obviously there, oh, that's too much. But now it looks lovely there, doesn't it? Maybe there. We definitely need one over here. Maybe just use the bottom. But use your acetate. Now, you see, I don't like that there. But maybe this one would fit better. Yeah, I think that one goes better there, doesn't it? So we'll do the group poppies over here. And what's lovely about this, it does mix lovely with... Obviously, your other poppy stamp. We'll have that one there. 
I've actually used this group poppies for um, a sympathy card just as a silhouette. It's such a useful stamp. Just want a little bit there. I don't want to overcook it. Now I want some over here. I was going to put that one there, but I do need a little bit of the poppy. Oh, that looks nice. Look, just that top bit. And again, I think we'll do the same here. Just going to add that top bit. Give it a quick wipe. And then back in, I wanted to add that other one, didn't I, from my group poppies. Here. So I just want a little... Remember, you can twist them. Just want to shape it a little. So let's just pop it there. Yeah, that's nice. I'm not sure if you can, can you see the whole? Now I've got a little space here, but I like that because I don't want it to look too solid all the way along. And what I'm going to bring in now, so I've got my main features, my poppies, I've got my lovely um, dandelions in the background. So I just need a bit of my favourite Mr Field grass. Now this is such a delicate stamp that you can actually stamp this and it will add to your design without overpowering it. And what I'm thinking is, let's maybe just add in the brown and we can always add black as well. Again, this will help with perspective. And what I'm thinking is here, look, because often when you have the poppy fields, and I'm not pressing as hard with this because I almost want to knock it back into the distance. Now, I could if I wanted to use second generation, but I'm thinking first generation. Now, again, I didn't press very hard, so but I'm happy with that. I don't want it all. I don't want it to look too specific. I want it to just look like we've got some of these lovely grasses just blowing in the wind in the distance. And then we'll just add a little few. Any spaces I've got, I just want them to just fill in those spaces. I don't want to overcook it, no pizzas, but let's just add a couple in black to help with perspective. So I think here, near that brown, let's just add one in black right across there. And maybe a second generation there. And what's nice is you're building up, but you're keeping some nice, let's just add one here. You don't want it, you want it to look like your lovely meadow. Stop. But you don't want it to... Um, over over face so i think we'll call that with our stamping and i'm just going to blot it again your versafine is a slower drying ink so always make sure you blot it and what we can do now is i want to color my poppies so i'm actually just going to use some watercolor paints now you could use anything, you can use ink and water. It just happens, I've got some paints here and it's what I used on, on my main one just because um, it was nearest at hand. And I'm going for red poppies. Quite often I, I tend to colour blue poppies for the Mechanopsis poppy, but I thought with this being orange and red, the red would really pop. And again, the red over the orange ink will work really well. So we'll just have a little bit of red on this one here as well. Now, have I got another one of those? No, I think I'm... Um, and what I will do... So that soaks in. I'm just going to come in with a deeper red. Now, again, if you want to use pencils, you can use pencils. It's whatever medium you like. I've got to be honest, I just did this for speed. And then just on these little, the poppy heads, the buds almost, 
just want a little bit of green so just think it'll brighten it up on these I just add a little bit of green right I think we're put that away and then what I'm going to do is I've got my fan brush in my water pot so I'm going to tap my fan brush just to get the the big sort of blobs off and then I'm just going to do a little bit of faux bleaching now remember you've stamped in permanent ink I'm just being mindful of my poppies because obviously I've just watercolour painted them and I'm just going to add now when you're starting off if you're not 100% happy with your blending this is a great way of um, just adding some faux bleaching some water really helps and it distracts from your blending I just want a few more there so again sorry about the noise I just tap the most off because if any of you haven't done it and you know if you go straight from your water pot sometimes you can end up with really big splodges of water I mean sometimes that's what you want but I didn't particularly want that today so while that faux bleaches we'll just and I'm just gonna stand up and check you can see that so look how that's full bleaching. It's looking beautiful, isn't it? So we'll just do a quick run the heat tool over it just to give it a bit of a bit of a helping hand. Now again, I'm going to pick it up because you'll find it'll dry quicker if you pick it up because the air will go through the card. So again, front and back, always dry your work front and back be enough and then all that's left to do is just some finishing touches now i'm not putting a verse on this the one i sent to my friend i put the lovely birthday wishes on but what i thought is i'm going to keep this because i think this card would fit it could be an anniversary card a get well card a birthday card so i'm thinking this is going to go in my stash of emergency cards but i want to add a bit of sparkle and i've got quite a few things here that we're going to use so first of all we've got our white gel pen and I'm just going to add oh look at these they just cry out for the white gel pen don't they the dots and maybe we'll just add some the hint now the sun's here so it's going to catch this bit isn't it so we'll just have a little bit of and then maybe we could add some white on these and already it's just brightening it up there's something about adding just white highlights for me now again if it's not your cup of tea and you don't want to you take it and add whatever finishing tricks you want to do on your design that's what what you do now this one will just now again, this would lend itself, we've got some beautiful silhouette butterflies that would look nice on here as well, or maybe a little dragonfly. Just going to add it there. And then a just, just a couple to catch, whether it would just here, the sun would just catch that, wouldn't it? And this one here. Now this one, I'm just going to add this side. Where the sun's going to catch it maybe just a bit there you get the idea now i've purposely not added any onto my grass because i'm going to add glitter there i do just want to add that one there we go so that's the the white jelly roll and then what i'm going to do where we've got our lovely faux bleach and we're going to make some of these into orbs Right, and we're just going to ignore that because that's that's the a delivery. So let's hope they just leave it. And it's my Lavinia order actually, so I'd better just leave it. Um, and what I'm going to do is add some. I'm going to look for one of these nice white full bleach areas, and I'm going to add some orange. And this is my pastel pencil, and some yellow. And then I'm just going to go over with my white and just give it a rub. Now, there's lots of ways of doing this. You can use paint. 
as I say, I just like to use my pastel pencils. So the same thing, we do one here. We'll have another little orb. So we'll go for the orange, the yellow, and then we'll just add the white. And it just gives that lovely sort of smoky feel. And then what we'll do is just add a dot in the middle with our gel pen. So we're going to just do that. We're going to have a few more. So orange, yellow, white, give it a rub. And again, I just rub with my finger and then put the little dot in the middle. Now, I don't want to overdo this. So we'll just take, well, let's go for that odd number. We've got three. Let's have two more. So where have we got a nice area? Let's go here. And we have got some lovely orb stamps. You could use those if you wanted. I'm just thinking, just one over here. Now this one might not show up very well, but I just think the placement would be nice here. And then just white dot in the middle. Right, let's let's have a look. That looks nice, doesn't it? Don't want to overcook it. And again, as I say, you can do as little or as much as you want with that. I don't want to do too many. But what I do want to do is add a little bit of sparkle. And I'm going to use my stickles. Now, for me, the best way I find to use this is to pop some stickles on my mat only because I find it spits and also I find if I put it directly I can use too much and again that's just me so I just have an old sort of brush pen which I then almost paint my stickles on if you're happy using it direct from the tube by all means do that I'm not saying that's wrong at all like I say I'm just here to give you different ideas of how to use things and what I'm doing is with my field grass I'm actually just adding I also find it dries quicker if I use this. Now, if you've got the um, lovely eco glitters, you could use the eco glitter and your quickie glue pen. I must admit, I need a new quickie glue pen. So that's why I'm using my stickles today. And again, I've got some of that lovely grass here. And I find doing it this way, as I say, um, it goes further, it dries quicker, and I can really get it exactly where I want it. And it doesn't sort of spit. Sometimes I find it can almost um, spit at the work. And I don't want too much. I just want a nice amount, maybe just a bit in here. Right, let me have a look, how's that looking? Oh, look, now you see when I, you can see if I just tilt it, you can see how that's going to look. So we'll pop that lid on, get rid of that. And let's just wipe that up. Keep our, <laughs> keep our space clean and tidy. And that didn't take long, did it? Do you know, I reckon that's taken about half an hour, that's all. And what I'll do, I'll bring, I'll just put the black card behind it. I won't glue it on because you don't need to see me do that but look how with the black that really pops the silhouette stamping really shows up I think that's such a beautiful I think it's a sunset I think it's the end of the day a lovely hazy and if I bring my card blank in look at that the only thing I do want to do is just on my envelope I want to get A little bit of stamping so I just want to bring in this group poppies check my envelopes the right way up don't want to do it upside down now when I do envelopes I must admit I always use a permanent ink just in case I'm going to post this we do seem to get a lot of rain here and I don't want it to get wet so I just want to put this in the corner so a permanent ink if I use my distress and it rained, obviously it would run because it's water-based. 
so the versifying is permanent so i know that won't move i know if it gets wet i'll be fine and so there we've got my matching envelope and then and so i won't glue it down and take up any more of your time i'll hold it there we go so that is going in my box ready my emergency card ready for when i need it and one of the lovely new sentiments i think will be perfect on there so thank you for joining me i hope you've enjoyed that i hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and thank you all for your lovely comments i really appreciate them and thank you for subscribing again honestly it, it means a lot so you take care and if you're having a bad day because i know some of us do extra special hug from me if you need it it's there for you okay you take care everybody much love and hugs. Bye for now.